you. Front view. Flip up. Close door key. Wavy. There. Hello sewing enthusiasts and bag makers. Are you looking for a project to advance your sewing skills? Customize your fashion style? Using minimal sewing supplies? I have you covered. No pun intended. Coming up. So here's why a bucket hat is the perfect project you've been looking for. So hats are not only fun to accessorize, but they're also functional and they don't require a lot of supplies. So here are some things to consider. Bucket hat patterns come in such a variety. Do you favor a narrow brim or do you like the big floppy brims? Or do you like something that's more rigid in style? Consider the hat's use and the fabric weight that you want for the season that you're choosing. Or are you looking for something trendy for winter, something maybe dark and moody? But they're also functional and they don't require a lot of supplies. As a matter of fact, I've used several upcycled fabrics to make some of these hats. You can easily find patterns all over the internet, social media, as well as stores like Etsy. You can find free patterns or pay a couple of dollars to, them to download your digital pattern. So in preparation for this tutorial, I tried out a couple of different patterns and I'm gonna be sharing with you the websites down below and also compare some of the different features of the patterns. Now overall, the patterns are as far as sewing skills, they require the same sewing skills. So once you know how to make a bucket hat, you can kind of tailor the appearance of them. But overall, they're basically the same as far as the construction is concerned. So check out the ones that you like. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite and also which one you would consider making. So the first hat that I made is from Mood Fabrics. It is a free pattern for download. I will link it down below. I made this one out of recycled or upcycled napkins that I found at the thrift store. And actually this one's a little, it's a little small. I picked the small size, which I didn't realize my head was so big, but they have has sizes from one year all the way to adult extra large. It has a narrower brim. It stands out fairly well. So you can take a look. The top part's a little small, I know. <laughs> but the cool thing about these kinds of hats is you can wear them low, you can flip them up. You can flip them up in the back. There you go, so that's that one. So this next pattern is by the Sew Club. And again, there's, I think it's a small, medium, and large. I believe I paid a couple of dollars for this one. But this I is more reminiscent of a sun hat. I do like it because it has a wider brim, so it provides more shielding from the sun. And what I did for this one is I attached straps on it so that, so that I could wear it. You know, you could wear it if you're going boating or you could make the smaller version for a child and tie the strap up underneath. So you can also tie the strap up and back and then it looks more like a little cowboy hat. Then this one is the very first one that I made and I talk about a sun hat. I love this one. And this one was also uh, made by the same pattern, the Sew Club. This is the original one, so it has a broader brim and it's more like a sun hat. While what I did with this one is that I made the brim smaller and shorter. I believe I gave it a four inch brim and I'll show you in the video how to make that brim narrower. But this one I just adore because I found the fabric at the thrift store and it was actually uh, somebody left remnants of their fabric. They must have made, I think it looks like the fabric that you would use for patio furniture cushions. And so it was a little more challenging to sew with because it, it is a heavier fabric, but I love the structure of it and I love how, um, how summery it looks. And this pattern came from courtesy of thoughtful creativity and it's actually a pattern that 
Alyssa shows you how to draft and fit it to your own size. So this one you can wear again flipped up in the front. I like it kind of flipped up in the back and it has much more of the traditional square bucket hat appearance. So I think this this would look really elegant in a dark charcoal or black fabric. She actually shows you how to have the brim to where it stands out more. And I'll link her video down below. Excellent video. But that's the look. And again, you can flip it up in the back. You can wear it all the way down. And there you have it. If you find value from this tutorial, give it a thumbs up if you like it. So I'm going to show you how to make this perfect sun hat for summer. So why not make one for yourself? Okay, so first of all, you'll need your pattern. This is from the Sew Club and I'll link it below. You'll need a fabric that is heavier weight like canvas. This is a woven fabric, denim, or a quilt cotton. You'll just need to interface it to make it a little sturdier. So you'll need one yard of fabric or a meter. Then if you are going to interface it, you will need interfacing. You could use either sew-in interfacing or iron-on interfacing. You'll need 15.7 inches by 15.7 inches. So just a square or 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters. So you'll need some cut and thread and then you'll need some scissors pins, a marking tool that is a disappearing ink, your pattern pieces. Now I have made a video on how to make these templates. So if you'd like to make the templates, I will link the video so that you can see how to make them. But uh, I would encourage you to try the pattern first to see and make sure that you like it. If you're planning on making multiple hats, then it may be an advantage to make these templates because it may make it faster for you to trace around. There are only really three pattern pieces for all of these hats, so it's not that difficult. There's the top piece and the band and the brim. One more thing, a seam ripper, just in case everybody makes mistakes. Okay, so we'll get to cutting. So the first piece I'm going to cut is the brim piece and you want to cut this piece on the fold. I'm trying to maximize your fabric so don't leave a bunch of extra fabric over here. You know, you grab your marking tool and trace around your pattern. Okay, then I'm going to just use some pins to secure the two layers so it doesn't shift while I'm cutting. Just a couple is all that you need. And then we'll cut it up. Here we go. And that pattern tells you to cut two of the main fabric and two of the lining fabric. So I'll repeat the process for the fabric, the main fabric, as well as the lining. Okay, so next up is the top part of the hat. And I need to cut one on the main and one on the lining. So two of these because I'm doing the same fabric. Okay, so next I'm gonna cut two of the main, two of the lining, so four pieces all the same, cutting it on the fold, and this is for the band. And we're done with the cutting. Well, I've got to cut these out still, but now we're done with the pieces that we need. Whatever interfacing you're using, you'll just want to follow the directions from the manufacturer. This is a lightweight to medium weight. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and iron it on. Okay, so here's a tip. If you're upcycling your fabric and you're not exactly sure what it's made of, you always want to make sure that you're testing it on an extra piece of fabric with your iron. You just wanna, you just wanna make sure that you can press the fabric. 
You also want to use a pressing cloth and just check it. So it's starting to fuse and the fabric's still looking okay. So I'll just finish this off camera. Okay, so you also want to repeat the other piece of interfacing for the other half of the brim. Okay, here's another tip. When you're following the directions to the interfacing, generally on interfacing, you want to pick up your iron and set it down, pick it up, set it down and press for the time that it specifies on the directions. What you don't want to do is what I did over here. And this is a great example. You see how it's buckling, the interfacing is buckling. This is where I've, I sort of did one of these and it causes it to fuse and buckle along the fabric versus nice and smooth where you pick it up and press, pick it up and press, pick it up and press. So taking a look at all the pieces, we have four for the brim, two of which have interfacing on them, four pieces for the band that goes around the hat, and then two for the top. Okay, so the first step is to take two of the brim pieces and place them right sides together. Okay, so I'm gonna stitch down at 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter on all of the short ends. You wanna back stitch the beginning and end. Just check my, there we go. And make sure you have it on a shorter stitch length. I'm gonna use a 2.5. Very close. I just want to see if it actually fits. Yeah, <laughs> we're good. Feels like it fits just fine. I want to make sure it wasn't too tight. Kind of a cute look, isn't it? <laughs> Alright. Okay, so step number one, done. Just pinking the ends of the brim as best as I can. Okay, this is some thicker fabric. Double handing it. Boop. So essentially you're just pressing all of the pieces that you just stitched together. Okay, next I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I'm gonna top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the actual seam with a 3.0 millimeter stitch length. And I'll do that for all of the pieces. This will also help everything lie flat when you put the lining and the exterior fabric of the trim together. And repeat for all the sides. Again, this is optional. Okay, so the next part is working on this brim component. We're gonna take the two brim pieces and match them right sides together. And the key here is to make sure that your seam, I think you can see it, is lined up. So as you're clipping it, you want to make sure that you are getting those bad boys lined up. And I'm gonna just clip again. all the way around. Oh, I think you need to watch all of this. This might put you to sleep. So one thing I wanted to mention is the seams. When you're lining up the seams, you can splay open the seams to lie flat, but my fabric's sort of thick. So I'm gonna have one side of the seam go in one direction and then the other side of the seam go in the opposite direction. Just kind of nestling them in. 
So it doesn't matter how you do it. You just want to, well, it does matter how you do it because <laughs> you can reduce the bulk if you're, if you splay it open, but I pinked too close to the seam. So now I can't splay. So <laughs> I'm just going to make it work. That's it. Now that the brim is clipped, take it to the sewing machine and stitch it at three eighths of an inch from the edge. Same millimeter stitch length, 2.5 or three. And as usual, back stitch. All right, so the next step is to take the brim and turn it with right sides facing out and wrong sides facing in. So you're just turning it the right side out. And it starts getting exciting because it's starting to look like something. <laughs> okay, so the next step is pressing it, but I'm going to finger press it because it's so thick, the fabric, and take top it. stitch it is the next step. Now for the top stitch, you always want to use a little bit longer stitch length and I'm probably going to do a 3.0 to 3.5, probably a 3.5 because this fabric is so thick. Okay. So I'm just pushing it out, making sure that, and it's not such a bad idea to Actually, it's a really good idea to clip it. Just so that the bottom part doesn't roll out on you while you're trying why why while you're trying to top stitch. Okay, so I've clipped it all the way around. Just pick a spot to start and top stitch it. And you're top stitching it about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Okay, so the brim is all done. Set that aside. Okay, so next part is grabbing the band, one of the bands. So you should have two of the bands that we did earlier. And you grab one of the bands and it's time to grab one of the circle hat pieces. Now what you're gonna do is carefully pin the right side of the fabric to right side of the band. So it can get kind of tricky and at this part you could also cut slits if needed to to get both sides matching but We'll see how, and each fabric's different. So some fabrics stretch better than others. So we'll see how it goes. So you're, you're, I think you can kind of see. So that is your band and you're putting the, the top crown piece in. And so everything right now is facing out. So when you flip it, after you've sewn it, when you flip it, you'll have all the right sides facing out. So continue around. So and then when you uh, cut slits, you always wanna just cut the slits in the band side, not the top part. Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about. So you can see Kind of sits like a bowl when you get to this side this side is more taut than the inside so it's you can cut some slits in this side so that it will stretch so i'm going to do that right now now you can see it can open up and accommodate the other side a little bit better. So this is just a matter of working with it. There you have it. 
gonna put it on its side. Let me see if you can kind of see. I'm gonna put it on it, its side and stitch from the inside part like that. You're gonna stitch three eighths of an inch from the edge all the way around, back stitching at the beginning and end. One thing when you're going around, you wanna make sure that you're not catching the band part. Okay, so one side's done. Now you're gonna repeat the same process for the lining. So grab the other band and, and the circle and repeat the whole process of clipping and stitching, which I won't bore you with on camera. So I'll meet you on the other side. Okay, so the next part is you take your brim and in my case, it really doesn't matter which side I'm using, but you want to have the lining is underneath. And this is gonna be the lining and you kind of put it in middle and line up the seams and pin. Then work your way around. So you're taking the, the bottom part of the top part of the hat and the top part of the brim and pinning it. If you need to do some clipping, you can do some clipping on the band part to help with the stretching it a little bit. Just don't go too deep. Then the main thing here is making sure that your seams, side seams are aligned because when you flip it out, you want those to align. Everything's on the way. Just to show you now, the straps are attached, the little hook in the back is attached. Now the last step is taking the last top part of the hat and matching up the seams and turning it up a hammock. This is where the seam guide comes in handy. Turn it up bring it and match the seam like so and pin it and then I'm going to top stitch all the way around so in pinning you just want to consistently keep the same the width <laughs> it's not a circle but anyway you want to keep the same width all the way around and you want to cover up the other stitching line. Three inches. I'm going to repeat that all the way around while I'm hemming this and pinning. What I have to do is to top stitch all the way around three millimeter stitch length an eighth of an inch away from the edge. we go. Hat is complete. Now if you would like you can also put some tacking stitches to keep the lining up but I think it's okay. So there we go. Since here side there's a little hook to hook it up to wall and here it is on that side.
So just going to press it and try it on. Fun part. Hello sewing enthusiasts and bag makers. Today is a little different. Oops. 